And one of the best ways to go about building your credit is piggybacking off of someone else's credit. Alexia Nicole and I'm living my life by design um, for those of you that may be new to the channel make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button for those of you all that have been watching I think it's like a 60 to 40 percent of watchers that are not subscribed please go ahead and click the subscribe button it's free of charge y'all and then make sure you go ahead and ding that notification bell so every time I post a video randomly <laughs> you will be notified and you won't miss it okay but I know y'all are here to talk about credit credit right that topic is just like so cliche like eh. but we're talking about it today all right let's go ahead and jump right on into it a licensed real estate agent in Texas Houston specifically let me go ahead and plug this if you know anybody in Houston or the surrounding suburbs looking to buy sell or invest go ahead tell them to hit up Alexia Nicole we'll get it done for you okay anyways just had to plug that because I wouldn't be a black entrepreneur if I didn't anyways so credit how do you build credit how do you fix your credit do you actually need to pay somebody to repair your credit these are questions that I get often I've had them myself and I've answered them I fix my credit more than one time truth be told um, some of y'all know I was a flight attendant and getting into that career your money is low 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 so cards got maxed bills were late um, things happened so I had to rebuild my credit from that and I did it on my own I did not use a credit repair company now I have used one in the past and I won't necessarily bash them but I do feel like if you were educated and if you have the knowledge and actually learn how credit works, the algorithm, you won't need to spend that couple extra hundred dollars. So that is what I'm here to share with you all today, okay? First things first, y'all, you should freeze your credit. Yes, freeze your credit regardless of if you have no credit, bad credit, excellent credit. Let's go ahead and freeze it. The best way to go about doing that is it's easy. Just do a Google search. Google freeze my credit for the three credit bureaus. You have to do them all separately. Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. And I believe it's probably a $10 to $20 charge to actually go in and freeze it. Okay, I gave you the tip, but what is the actual point behind freezing the credit, right? So it is the best way to economically protect your credit. We all hear these crazy stories of credit fraud. Somebody used my social to go buy a new car. They bought a house or whatever it may be. Basically, they run up your credit. They get all these inquiries. They buy all these, all these things. You have no idea where it came from and then your credit score plunges. So freezing your credit can prevent that. You are going to be the only one that has access to your credit. So you can unfreeze it whenever you need to. So if you know that you're about to go apply for a new credit card or buy a new car or whatever you need to do where they're actually going to run your social, run your credit, then for that moment, you can unfreeze your credit, let whatever bank or whoever it is do what they need to do. And once they're done, you can freeze your credit back. It is the best way to protect you and your money, honey. Okay. So. Freezing your credit doesn't hurt you in any way. Whatever accounts that you already have open are still going to be reporting to your credit and your credit can still fluctuate just depending on how you're paying your bills and I hope you're paying them on time. All right, so that is step number one, freeze that credit. All right, y'all, so how do you actually manage your credit? Well, first of all, you have to know what your credit score is is you can't be living under a rock or just scared to check it I mean when I was younger or really fresh out of college and I know I did some damage I never wanted to look at my credit I never wanted to look because I was like Lord that's just not something that I want to deal with right now 
but you have to put your big girl panties on, okay? Big boy briefs, whatever they may be, and just go ahead and check it. And the person is entitled to one free credit report annually. And you can go to annualcreditreport.com. I believe that's the website. I'll put it down here and it's free and it will run all three bureaus for you and it will tell you everything that is on your credit report. Okay, so you need to know what's on there so you can manage these things. So make sure that you do that, okay? That's just to get your report and to see what all is listed under the three bureaus. It doesn't actually give you your score. So if you're interested in getting your score, I personally recommend going to Experian and it will give you your scores and you can actually see your report. And there's so much more that Experian can do for you. There is a free version and then there's um, different options that you can pay for, which will also teach you how to manage your credit as well. So make sure that we sign up for Experian and get your free credit report annually at annualcreditreport.com. All right, so those of you that are saying, well, Alexia, I don't even have any credit. How do I even get it? Every time I try to apply for something, I can't get anything. Like, I'm new to this country. From where I came from, we didn't have credit. We didn't do anything with credit. So how do I actually build my credit? I never ruined it, but I just don't have any. You're not the only person. It's very common. And one of the best ways to go about building your credit is piggybacking off of someone else's credit. Now, now what exactly do I mean by piggybacking off of someone else's credit? Get, get with someone that you know and trust and have them list you as an authorized user on one of their credit cards or credit accounts. Now, the things that we want to make sure before we just tell them, yeah, add me to whatever card. No, 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 no. We don't want them to just add you to whatever card. We want to make sure that this is a card that is in good standing. Um, it doesn't have to be a huge limit, um, but we do want to make sure that their card is not maxed out for one. So if it is a $10,000 card, we want to make sure that it's not maxed out to the limit of $10,000. Really, we want to make sure that they're keeping it below 50%, 30% is even better. They're still actively using this account. So once you they go in and add you to it, so what they'll need is your social. They'll call whoever the bank is and say, I want to add an authorized user to this account. They'll need your social security, boom, and in hopefully within a month, it'll start reporting to your credit. All right, y'all, so we've got things rolling. You've been added as an authorized user. You're starting to see some improvement with your credit within the first 30 days. That is awesome. Now, let's go ahead and apply for your own credit card, right? So... If you did the authorized user thing, you should hopefully at this point have seen enough increase in your scores to go ahead and apply for an unsecured credit card, which is the credit cards that we all know about. You go to the store, they say, hey, you want to sign up for a credit card? Um, and you say yes. You don't have to give them any money up front. They're just going to run your credit. And that, at that point, that's when you're going to unfreeze your credit. Ask them which bureau they're running. You just unfreeze that specific one. Let them do your thing, get approved, and freeze it right back. So now you have your credit card. Now, if you still aren't able to get approved for an unsecured credit card, you want to go ahead and apply for a secured credit card. Now, Alexia, what is a secured credit card? Most secured credit cards are where you apply and you actually front the money for the credit. I have seen some that start as low as $25 and you can go up to as much as you want. But on average, most of them start between two to $300 that you actually have to send to the bank. They put on the card and now it is actually treated as credit. So you still want to keep this card active, but you want to keep that balance below 30%. Okay? You can't get approved for the unsecured credit card. Um, make sure you go ahead and do a secured credit card and then most of those report to your credit multiple times a month. So if you're really managing this card well, you're going to see some major increases in your credit with a secured credit card. All right, so I kind of talked about it, but we want to keep the balances of our cards below 30%. 
right? That is, that's just the magic number. So if you have a card that has a limit of $10,000, you want to keep that card um, at $3,000 or below. So if you do have maxed out cards, if you're in one of these situations where you had good credit, decent credit, and, and you got into a little bit of financial funk like I did at one point in time and you maxed out everything, we want to be able to pay these cards back down. So 30% is the goal, but if you can't get to 30, of course, make big chunks of payments and knock it down, get to 50%, great, now get to 30 and try to keep it there. Um, and another thing is if you don't really have the money to put down and you didn't ruin it too bad, hopefully, maybe go ahead, not maybe, go ahead and give the bank a call and see if you can get a credit increase. So that way it's still going to have the same effect. The more credit that you have on the card, the better it is going to report and look is the whole gist. So if you have a $10,000 limit and you can't, you don't have the money to actually pay it down, Try the opposite way. Give the bank a call and see if you can get an increase to maybe twelve, thirteen, fifteen thousand dollars. So then that lowers your percentage gap right back down as well. Okay. Okay. So debt to credit ratio is a big deal. So like I was talking about in keeping it below thirty percent. So if you have a car that has a limit of a hundred thousand dollars, you know I'm getting a little extreme here. Um, and nothing's wrong with having that though. That is great. That is awesome for you. But do not max that card out. Hello? Okay, that that's just going to put us back in a hole where we don't want to be. Let's just make sure that we keep that limit below 30%. Like I said, every six months or so if your credit is looking good and you're managing this card well, go ahead and give the bank a call and say, can I get another increase? The more credit you have, look, the more, I'm going way out here, y'all can't even see my arm anymore. The more credit you have, the less debt you have, the better your debt to credit ratio is going to be. And a tip on how to actually manage your credit cards. So don't look at your credit cards as extra money that you have outside, besides the cash that you have because you it's, that's not true. What cash you have is the actual amount of money that you really have. The credit is just something that you're utilizing to show good financial balance in your life when you want to go and apply for things because credit is king, y'all. It is king. So when I was, I'm just giving y'all all my information, crazy information that I never knew, um, but when I was in college, I treated credit like it was additional money on top of the cash that I already had. And that's just not what it was. So now that I'm smarter and I'm educating myself and I'm sharing this knowledge with y'all, you better do it. You want to treat your credit cards like it is the cash that you actually have. So I have one card that I specifically use for the gas station. I use the card to pay for the gas, then I transfer the cash from my bank account to the credit card, make that payment. And just do that with whatever other cards that you have. Now, every now and then you might wanna go splurge and buy a little something. Okay, cool, but make sure that you're gonna have the income to pay for it later if you don't necessarily have that cash in that moment. If you built your credit that high to where you actually got it, then treat yourself a little bit. I'm not gonna say don't ever spend it, but do not go over above and beyond if you have 5k of income a month don't go and spend 10k on your cards that's not right you should not do that you should probably be spending maybe $2,500 in your card for the month if you're only making 5k or really less what 1500 okay like just remember to be responsible with the cards the card is not extra cash it is equal to whatever cash you have because you want to use that cash to pay off that credit card. All right, y'all. Payment history. Payment history, payment history. So important. Let me just throw this fun fact out there for y'all. Payment history represents 35% of what affects your credit. That is the highest percent of all the things that they put together to figure out your credit score. Payment history is at the top. So be on time with your payments. And when I say be on time, I mean do not be more than 30 days late, okay? I know sometimes things get tough 
we're human life happens okay it happens hard too sometimes um and if you have to shuffle some bills around or you have to call and get payment dates moved and whatever it is just try not to be more than 30 days late with whatever payment it is you have if you have an 800 dollar car note out there and it's due on the first make sure that we get it paid before the 30 day late period okay because that is when the credit bureaus are going to find out about it and it's going to be listed on your credit report as late and those don't go away okay they they stay there so if you are trying to buy a home and you have more than one late payment on your credit out of all the accounts that you have if you have two you won't get approved for a mortgage so that's within a year, within a 12 month cycle, if you have more than one late payment, if you have 10 credit cards or 10 accounts that are reporting to your credit report and more than one of those accounts have shown late within a 12 month cycle, in that 12 months, you will not be able to be approved for a mortgage, okay? So, if you've paid one thing late, you slipped up and you forgot and it's on that report, don't you get another. Don't you get that second one or you're going to just have to sit there with your thumb in your mouth sulking and just wait for that time to pass. All right? So, let's just make sure that we are paying our bills on time, on time, on time, on time, on time. What's that saying? Being early is on time and being on time is late. <laughs> So the last tip is going to be about credit validation letters, not dispute letters, which is what most um, credit repair people do. They send dispute letters, they also send some validation letters, but this is something that you can do on your own. So in my mind, it, this may come out a little harsh, lazy people use credit repair, right? Or just people that are lacking knowledge, ignorant people whatever it may be, people that do not know better. If you don't know better, you can't do better, okay? When you know better, you do better. So let's do better because I'm putting it out here for y'all. So if you have collections on your credit report, once you go to annualcreditreport.com, you're going to see a list of everything on your credit report. If you have collections on there that maybe truly are yours or it's something that you've never even seen before and what a collection is, let me rewind, something, a collection is something that a creditor has reported to your credit and said, this person never paid this money that they owe us. Now it's sitting on my credit report, money that they want you to send them. It has a negative effect on your credit, basically. So, what you want to do is take the time, and it may be a little time consuming, it may be annoying, but you need to do this to get your credit score up into the, the wonderful 800s, okay? Or even if you're in the fives, up to the 700s, okay? Yes, we want to have financial power, and credit is the way that we get that. So you want to send debt validation letters, which is once again, not a dispute, but what a debt validation letter does, it sends it, you send it to the account and you ask them to send you proof that you actually owe this money. And if they don't send that within 30 days, then it has to be removed from your credit report. Okay? Now, guess what? I can actually send you a template for a debt validation letter. So if you need one, if you're like, oh my gosh, Alexa, these tips are bomb, girl, yes, sign me up a link down below for you to send me your information and I'll, then I'll send you all the information that I have said in this video including the debt validation letters for you to send out to all those little nasty collection people on your credit report and get our credit scores boosted okay y'all anyways once again make sure that you are subscribed to my channel okay subscribe 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 I'm gonna be dropping knowledge a lot more often and if it's not that often but when I drop it it's gonna be good <laughs> okay and then also make sure you go over to my Instagram page and follow my Instagram it is Alexia Nicole dot life and I will always have content on there for you all to learn and do better and know better okay but until next time make sure you subscribe like and share